Hey guys, it's Mike from the Geek Pub. And today, we're going to build my new desktop and gaming rig. I've been wanting to build a new desktop and gaming rig for quite some time, and now that time is finally here. And I went all out on this bad boy, including a GTX 1080 Ti Strix and the Intu Evolve tempered glass case. I'll include links to all of the components in the description and on my website at thegeekpub.com. For the power supply, I went with an EVGA Supernova 850G3. It's fully modular and it rocks a 10 year warranty. The ASUS ROG Strix 270G motherboard paired with an Intel Core i7-7700K found its way into my build, unlocked and overclocked to 4.8 GHz. And with a fast processor, you're going to want fast I.O. So I installed a 500GB Samsung Evo 960 NVMe SSD and two 16GB sticks of Corsair Vengeance LPX for 32GB of DDR4 RAM. Once all of the components were installed, I simply screwed the motherboard into the Enthu Evolve using the included hardware. For CPU cooling, I decided to go with the Corsair H100i V2 liquid cooler. Since I'm overclocking the 7700K, keeping the CPU cool is a must. The M2 Evolve has a radiator bracket located at the top of the case, making installation a breeze. Now the fans that came with the Corsair H100i are, let's just say, boring. So let's toss those aside and put something worthy of a custom PC build. Thermaltake RGB ring fans to the rescue. The Thermaltake ring fans are just regular 120mm fans and will mount using the same hardware provided with the H100i. They'll do the same cooling job, but give our case some much needed style. The Intu Evolve has a fantastic rail on the back of the case that provides a cable raceway with velcro straps. This is important since the case has tempered glass sides and all of these cables will be visible. Additionally, the Evolve has strategically placed cutouts allowing for precise routing of your cabling, keeping everything looking super clean. The H100i's liquid pump already has thermal paste factory installed and simply attaches to the processor with four thumb screws. I attached the Thermaltake's fan controller to the back of the case using some industrial Velcro and routed the cables through the existing cutouts, which hides them nicely. The last thing left to do is install the massive NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti, and then install the tempered glass side panels. Okay, so this is one of those projects where um, after you get finished and you live with it for a couple of weeks, you kind of decide that you want to make a couple of changes, and that's exactly what happened. Um, the first change that I made was I put the um, original HS100i um, fans back in place. Um, I did this for two reasons. Um, the first one was I didn't really like how the um, Thermaltake software was controlling the fans. I didn't feel like it responded rapidly enough um, to some of the CPU temperature changes. But honestly, the most important reason that I changed it was because all you could see was two dashed lines on the uh, RGB lighting at the top. And I really wanted that to be more visible. And now you can see with them in the front, you can see the ring effect of the fan and it's visible all the time. And I really liked that a lot. Um, the other big change I made, um, and you might have actually caught it in one of the video clips because I changed it midway through the, the actual build, was I moved the radiator from the uh, far left side to the far right side. And that, again, purely for aesthetics, I really wanted the hoses of the CPU cooler that go to the pump to not be covering the Corsair logo um, on top of the um, liquid cooler pump itself. And so again, just more aesthetics. And um, I redid some of the cable management just a little bit to make it a little cleaner. Um, but this project has turned out to be phenomenal. And this thing is a beast. Um, I will give you one warning though, if you decide to build this machine or one like it, it can get extremely noisy. The GTX 1080 Ti, um, along with the rest of the fans, when, when playing something like Titanfall, Titanfall 2, um, with everything set to extreme, the fans in this guy turn into a jet engine and it gets incredibly annoying. Um, but I guess you have to live with that to get the performance that you're looking for. Um, additionally, in Adobe Premiere Pro, this thing just screams through a video editing track. Um, it makes my Mac Pro look like a dinosaur. Um, and I have one of the uh, later generation uh, Mac Pro trash cans. And so this thing blows it away. Good job, Apple. This machine's about half the price. 
So I absolutely love the tempered glass look of this case. Um, a lot of cases today have um, these little windows and glass inserts, but this is an edge to edge, top to bottom, left to right, solid piece of tempered glass. And it's got the same thing on the back. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's just got a little bit of a smoky uh, temp to it. And then um, all of the LEDs shining through just make this thing absolutely gorgeous. So uh, I highly recommend this case if you're looking to build a computer and everything in it is so well laid out and so well thought out. Um, so bravo to Fantech for that. Um, again, this is the Enthu um, Evolve. Um, well, that's the end of this video. Um, please at leave um, at least 100 comments below telling me why I should have used Ryzen instead. Um, always look forward to those and I'll see you in the next video.